Hello, my dear viewers. This is Channel Made in Rusland, and I'm Marina. And you see, I am traveling again today around my great country, Russia. And um, the road goes via very picturesque and snow covered Russian villages. The main point of destination today is ancient city Pereslavl Zaleski. And I, I invite you to join me. Welcome to my new vlog. The first station is Cheese Factory. Yes, my dear viewers, this region is very famous with its uh, cheese uh, factories. And, and uh, there were 300 cheese factories during the uh, Tsar period of Russia. And uh, we have a degustation of homemade cheeses. Mm, I see the cheeses are so attractive and uh, different kinds. Hard cheese cheeses and uh, soft. Mm. Of course, prices are not low, but it's really handmade, homemade cheese. Oh, the best moments in my life. Different types of Russian cheeses. I used to buy European cheeses, but um, I hope one day I will start to buy Russian cheeses. For sure, for sure. I couldn't stop and I bought five or six uh, kinds of uh, cow and goat cheeses. Definitely, um, homemade cheeses are very expensive. I spent um, approximately 5,000 rubles. It's uh, more than $50. <laughs> but I like to support Russian manufacturers. Mm -hmm. One of the main treasures of this city, Pereslavl, is Plesheivo Lake. Have a look at this. Their research has shown that this lake has not one bottom, but several bottoms. Can you imagine? And the square of this lake is giant. It's 56 kilometers and the depth is 25 kilometers. Of course, of course, it's not a lake. No, it's like a snow field, but it looks wonderful. And here lives an uh, amazing fish, Ryabushka. I mean, in this lake. Such a gentle name, Ryapushka. Mm, can you hear that? Our Tsars adored this fish and um, they cooked it especially for bowls. And today we have a chance to try Ryapushka a little bit later. This small city, Pereslavl, uh, was one of the favorite cities of our famous Tsar, uh, Peter I. And um, Peter I was building here even funny fleet. Yes, yes, right here on this hill near the lake. Uh, 100 ships and 99 ships burned down in fire. Only one ship with the name Fortuna or the Fortune remained. Now it's a museum, but I'm not sure I... I can visit uh, this museum right now because because I feel lack of time. As for me, I like to visit souvenir shops. And my dear viewers, please write down in comments what do you usually buy for presents, uh, for souvenirs in different places in different countries. Oh, <laughs> have a look. They got my throw it out. Their minds as cold as ice. A lot of different traditional Russian things. Oh, just have a look at these dolls. <laughs> and this is the hero of Russian fairy tales. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty bells. <laughs> Traditional Russian souvenir as well. <laughs> a 
and I hope all of you know what's this. This is Matryoshka. Ah, and this is how this famous fish, Ryapushka, looks like. Mm. From this uh, mysterious Plesheva uh, lake with the with the several bottoms. Do you remember? I remind about this. 1,200 rubles. Again, handmade. Sometimes I'm ready to buy all the souvenirs, but if you remember, I have a lot of cheeses for presents. Oh, my dear viewers, this fish, this ryapushka, is such a significant thing here in Pereslavl that there is a museum of Ryapushka. Its name is the Kingdom of Ryapushka. Let's see. I adore small cities of Russia. They are so cute. And we are right inside the Russian traditional house. Uh, we call it Izba. And we have again the degustation of Ryabushka. And traditional Russian stove. This is Ryabushka, guys. Boy, cold smoking. <laughs> My mouth is watering. My dear viewers, fish Ryabushka is depicted even on the emblem of the city Pereslavl. And now I would like to show you just a little bit of the feast or the lunch. What did our great czars, for example, Ivan III, preferred for dinner with his guests? The main dish was fried swan with apples. And of course, fried small pig. And you see a sturgeon, you know, um, about sturgeon. Here is the link um, to my videos about sturgeon and salt. Uh, do you remember that salt was a treasure uh, in 15th century? Of course, bread, and here is Russian bread, karavai. And, my dear viewers, this is ryabushka. Okay, that's all. And our Tsars um, respected all the guests who could eat and eat and eat all day and night. Do you remember I mentioned about uh, several bottoms of Plesheva Lake? Here you can see it. This is one bottom and under this bottom you can find different caves. Great, yes? Very, very interesting. And maybe between the second and the third levels of Plesheva Lake we can find Dinosaurs. Uh, of course, of course, I'd like to shoot a video of uh, Ryapushka. This is cold smoked Ryapushka. This is hot smoked Ryapushka. Approximately 1,000 rubles for one kilo. And uh, well, have a look. <laughs> I have a box with Ryapushka already. And for sure, in these um, um, authentic places, you can. Uh, uh, usually by Russian traditional beverages is beating, um, cherries beating or mint beating or mm, honeysuckle rose is <laughs> beating. Yeah, something very attractive and um, traditional really. My dear viewers, you see that my life is not tedious at all. And I invite all of you to visit my country, my Russia, and to have fun together with us and with Ryapushka. And now we're going to have a lunch again with this amazing fish.
at our lunch today is again traditional and amazing. You know what's this? Uh, it's um, homemade fat with bread and Russian traditional soup shi. Um, I mentioned about borscht for many times, but this is shi without um, beetroot, but very, very tasty and with sour cream. Enjoy your meal! My dear viewers, this Russian traditional soup shi was made in a real Russian traditional stove. Mm. Very good taste, the taste of my childhood. Oh guys, life is not only eating, uh, life is not only the food, probably. I'm kidding. So, um, what I want to say, every self-respecting ancient city should have had its own Kremlin. And this is what uh, remains from um, medieval Pereslavl Kremlin. Uh, long story short, medieval Kremlin, medieval Kremlin walls. Um, it's like a fortress and um, it was built just to defend citizens from invaders. One of the main purposes of my visiting this um, city, Pereslav Zaleski, is this cathedral. It dates back to the 12th century. I can show you the dates. Yeah, 11. 52, 11, 57. Amazing, really. Such an ancient cathedral. Oh my gosh, it's close today. <laughs> I hope I'll have another chance to visit Pereslavl. And let's go further. <laughs> Uh, the only thing I can do right now is to shoot a video of this wonderful ancient uh, Orthodox cathedral from the top of earthworks of Kremlin. Oh, it's high and there's a river there, frozen river. But it's picturesque, yes, guys. I see another one, a Russian Orthodox church behind the trees. Uh, by the way, the first mentions of this city, Pereslavl, dates back to 1152, the same date as the date of birth of this cathedral. Medieval cathedrals and fashionable cars of 21st century. Amazing life. Everything is together. I have a strong desire to visit uh, this church. Let's try. Thank God I'm Siberian girl and um, I'm used to live in a cold climate. I'm not afraid of being frozen at all. But it's better to to wear something to to save my head. I adore Russian Orthodox culture. It's really our basement of our society and our life. Guys, let me introduce you magic pagan. Blue stone. Ah, for so many centuries, Russia has professed the Christian religion, but we still believe in the power of pagan blue stone. Its weight is 12 tones, and according to uh, to the legends, this uh, stone moves from one place to another, and mermaids gather around this stone and lure the lost travelers. Thanks God I'm not lost traveler. 
The price for visiting this magic place is 300 rubles. You see, I have a ticket. And I also believe in the power of this blue stone. Let me touch it again and make the remaining wishes. Truth be told, guys, it, it's not blue. It's, uh, you see, it's black stone. Very heavy. But with a lot of legends. And uh, for 300 rubles. Of course, of course, this Plesheva Lake territory is a national park. Uh, together with uh, its blue stone, blue magic pagan stone. And... Um, it's worth visiting because it's funny. <laughs> and who knows? Maybe all of my wishes will be fulfilled tomorrow. After the touch to the pagan traditions, uh, now it's time to come back to Christian religion. And now uh, I'm visiting Nikitsky Monastery. It's amazing. It's so beautiful and so white. And I have a video on my channel that we shot together with my friend Tanya in this monastery and here is the link you can refresh your memory and um, I'm going to show you something terrific right now I think nothing can be compared with the Orthodox churches just have a look In my opinion, it's the best buildings in the world. And our great Tsar, Ivan the Terrible, he was really terrible. He visited this monastery and even his son was healed here by one of the monarchs. I want to show you the monastic cell. Feel this tranquility and sacredness. And I'm, I'm going to visit the cathedral of 16th century. The son of our Tsar Ivan the Terrible was cured by the monks of the monastery and Ivan the Terrible ordered to build this church here. 16th century. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, today we're talking about Russia. Russian style, Russian villages, Russian windows, Russian Russian ancient times and Russian stoves and everything. Russian monasteries, of course. Russians like to take care of birds and these are houses for birds. It's getting dark and we have just arrived to the amusement park. Russian park. Russian traditional stove. And wonderful heroes of Russian fairy tales. My dear foreign viewers, do you know the name of this 
beautiful lady? Hmm? Write down in comments. Russians, please keep silence. The house for peasants is called Hata. And now I'm going to show you the house for wealthy Russians living in previous centuries. We call this house Terum. And it's really something unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, this is typical wealthy house. What do you make of that, guys? I think it's masterpiece, a wooden masterpiece. Oh, what I see inside. Mm, the exhibition of Russian traditional costume of 18th 19th centuries. As for me, I'm not a fan of exhibitions, only sometimes, but it it's gripping. Just have a look. Oh, I'd like to have such dress. Mm. I think it's very beautiful. Not only gla uh, dresses, but gloves as well. And the interior of Katerium is uh, rather cozy. You see? Mm. Uh, my friend Marina decided. Um, to fit this dress. It's very, very cold, you know. <laughs> ah, I'm like in the refrigerator. Have you heard that um, fact that Russian women are very beautiful? <laughs> Marina? Marina, you're like a lady. <laughs> I'm freezing. <laughs> you see, my dear viewers, the program of today's trip is so rich. <sighs> and we have one more cooking class and then uh, we will come back to Moscow. Finally, I'm tired, truth be told, a little bit. <laughs> I think that this um, Russian park is good for those who wants to um, get acquainted closer with um, mind-blowing and breathtaking Russian discoveries and Russian history and Russian cuisine uh, for foreigners maybe. Oh my dear viewers, one day I promised you to show our traditional um, Russian uh, beverage, low alcohol beverage. Its name is Medovucha and it's made from uh, honey. Uh, it's a really low alcohol drink, um, four or five degrees only, but I don't drink uh, even low alcohol drinks. I cannot try it, but I, I, um, I want to show you the bottles. It's like a deer or horse uh, or car. What would you prefer to buy? Goat, maybe? <laughs> I think it's, it's good for present. And um, its price is uh, 1,200 rubles, about maybe $15 for today's rate of exchange. Um, really, looks very nice. You can use this bottle after, um, after finish of, of the beverage itself. <laughs> yeah, very nice.